Safe Streets, a D.C.-based anti-drug organization, filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court this week over Colorado's legalization of retail marijuana. The suit targets lawmakers, pot shops, and even a construction company who delivered water to a marijuana grow plant uh, that, that worked with growers, citing its disregard of federal law and impact on communities. Uh, Mike, what's your quick take on what has garnered, garnered pretty big national headlines? <laughs> well, I, you know, Dave is the one who can tell us about the law, but it's, but it, the law, it's, they're suing on, on racketeering, is that right? That, that, yeah, it's one of them. Saying that the governor and this guy with the truck are racketeers. And, you know, one of the reasons that Colorado adopted the, uh, the legalization of marijuana was to get the gangsters out of marijuana. And, um, you know, the war on drugs has been a disaster in the country. It's, it's, it's stunning to me. What's stunning to me beyond these lawsuits is how well the law has worked so far in Colorado. Mm -hmm. It's worked better beyond anyone's expectations and not because we're racketeers. Right. Natasha, <laughs> um, what's your quick take on this? Well, I think that these, these lawsuits just prove that there is this massive elephant in the room. Federal law, state law, there's a discrepancy. And until those things are resolved, we can live in this bubble and really applaud, and I have to applaud, you know, the success of these programs, the money the, that it's bringing to our economy. Oh, there's a lot of good coming out of it. But there's still this elephant, <laughs> and we got to deal with it at some point. And that's what these lawsuits hint at. Alicia, I'm no lawyer, but do you think this is, uh, they're going to make more hay with lawsuits like this? Are, are more probably coming like this? Oh, assuredly, there, there will be more coming like this. There, there are so many iterations of this conflict, you know, between federal and state um, laws that, that surely there will be. I think one flaw, and again, I'm not a lawyer either. I did cover federal court for a while, so that makes me feel like I can say something about <laughs> you this. You can play one but, on TV. <laughs> um, but, but perspective injury is never something that, that gets very far, and that's what, you know, that's one of the, the claims that's common to both of these lawsuits. If this happens, then this will happen to me. So, you know, I'm not so sure that these are really a serious threat, but they once again echo, you know, as Natasha said, this, this conflict that has to be resolved. David, how does this go down? You are our lawyer in the room, so tell us what you think. <laughs> well, some, sometimes perspective threat is uh, when it's imminent and substantial and, and serious one. enough, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is enough to win. Uh, the core of the problem is the, the Reagan, Bush the first, Clinton the first, uh, <laughs> massive over-criminalization and, and growth of, of federal <laughs> criminal law, including on, on drug laws and other things. And yeah, it, it's ridiculous to say that if you're operating a legal business in Colorado or supplying water to a legal business, that that's racketeering. But Congress wrote a ridiculously overbroad statute <laughs> with the racketeering on uh, the RICO statute, and the drug statutes are, are way overbroad, and they've been abused on a bipartisan basis uh, by various administrations and by private plaintiffs. And so I think the solution is to, in the long run, get back to our original constitutional system of government where things like marijuana in Colorado are an issue for the people of Colorado and not for uh, D.C.